It's, what, 8 o'clock? No, nearly 9 o'clock. And there's only 8 centimeters of new coming overnight, so I think that I don't have to get up for the crack of dawn in order to um, go skiing tomorrow, so I am going to play with this. The capacimeter. <clears throat> now, of course, it's in an innovative package. Beautifully wrapped up for your unboxing pleasure. Um, I don't know why, but I just love these uh, these uh, envelopes that have the string on them. Very reusable. And they have some sort of a very business-like quality to them. I just like them. And I like the way they did the, uh, the seal on it. Anyways. The, uh, the person who um, partnered with uh, SAR on this kit, Jazz, um, runs a business making test equipment. Um, now, I've not invested in any of these so far, but it looks like oh, you should be able to get, and I probably shouldn't have shown people that, um, Jess, sorry, I'll do the appropriate things to make sure that only the people that are entitled to the discount get the discount, but... Um, He's offering for Boldport members um, a 15% discount, which is very generous. Um, because, you know, given the quality of the products that he creates, um, the price that he sells them at is tremendous value, I think. I, I will invest in, in some of them when I get a chance. But a nice board, a nice heavyweight board with a beautiful silk screen on it um, in the uh, the style of bold port with the beautiful hand-drawn traces oh, it's just when this gets populated if i don't except for my gumby-ish soldering it will uh, it will come out well um and yeah so what is this thing it is a capacitance meter capacitor so it measures capacitance Obviously, oh, that's a very nice, uh, very nice uh, battery connector, and it is using a um, a digital display. In that, it uses well an analogy digital display. These LEDs are two digits, and I think that um, there's a couple more LEDs that give you the um, the range that you're working in. So yeah. Um, inside one of these is going to be, is one of these going to be a microcontroller? I don't know. Uh, 556N, so that's a dual triple five, I think. And then some CD40, oh, well, no, this is, this is all just, um, logic chips. Huh. We'll have to dig in to see what, how that circuit actually works, because that seems... That seems very inventive. Um, so yeah, um, a few passives. Uh, what are these? Are these MC78L? Is that a voltage regulator? It might be. I'll have to check that. And that looks like a straight up MOSFET. Yeah, 2N7000 MOSFET. I don't know what they're using that for, but we will dig into it. And... <clears throat> Maybe solder this puppy up. Nice. Nice. I like it. So some triple five timers, or triple five timers, and some decade counters. So is all it's doing is sending out a clock to these decade counters, and then using the capacitance as a way of... So the variable capacitance can change the period of the clock. And are we counting the number of pulses 
using these decade counters in a certain given period of time. So you run one of the triple fives as your base clock, and then the capacitor will change the frequency of the other triple five, and then you can count the number of pulses in your first, or your second triple five um, timer that has the variable clock based on the capacitance, and um, that's how you're going to judge the capacitance. Is that how this thing works? Okay, comes with brilliant documentation. So um, I will go read the documentation and find out if my, um, if my supposition is in any way accurate at all. Yeah, exactly. Um, you have a master clock, and then um, you use a capacitance to adjust the, um, the pulse train frequency of the second clock, and then you use your two decade counters er, to um, count up how many pulses are being generated in each master clock cycle. The display works um, like a um, sort of analog meter sort fashion. So you've got digit 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So digits 0 to 9. So if uh, this was lit, it's the 6th. And if this was lit, so 63 or 6.3. Um, so it can count from 0, 0, 0, all the way up to 99. So you've got a theoretical, um, you've got a resolution on your display of um, 1%. Um, you, so you can measure one part in a hundred, you can display differences of one part in a hundred, and then it depends on your circuitry to determine how much um, actual precision you're going to be able to get, and then display whatever res resolution relative to that pre precision. So a few things are going to be um, uh, adjusting your, um, your theoretical precision in that the actual frequency of your master clock is going to depend on the very values of your resistors and capacitors that are generating the, the master clock. And then your, um, your sense clock is also going to be dependent on <clears throat> the, the values of the resistors. And then of course, the, the value value of the capacitor under test. But um, that's, that's so clever. Just the very idea of using the uh, triple fives to um, to uh, no microcontroller involved. Just let's count, count some clock cycles um, using one clock um, by varying the clock cycles of a second clock that are done using the triple five timer. Brilliant. So uh, just so that everybody understands. This was um, Jez's high school graduation project. So um, this guy's a bit brilliant, I think. <laughs> Way to go. I, I certainly wasn't doing stuff like this when I was in high school. Wow. Okay, so a triple five timer is a versatile IC. And what it can do is it can give you a square wave output that has a variable duty cycle from 50% to 100% and a variable frequency of that square wave uh, based on a very small number of external components. In fact, um, two resistors and a capacitor are all you need in order to um, determine what the shape, what the frequency and the duty cycle of your square wave is. Um, you sometimes, well, you'll, it's typical to filter um, your, um, your ground supply with, the, uh, with a small value of capacitor to eliminate noise on the control voltage pin. So that's pin um, five. And I'm just using these um, resistors as attachment points. Don't worry about the value of those. So um, ground power. Power goes to the reset um, through here. I'm also taking ground through this 
um, 0.01 microfarad capacitor and then I'm using these three components to adjust the um, duty cycle of the square wave. So basically that's one triple five timer. So what we're doing is we're creating, we've got two triple five timers on this guy here. One of them is going to be set up with, with the control period. Um, so we'll have a fixed known control frequency. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have a variable capacitor in this same circuit duplicated because there's two triple fives on this chip um, duplicated except the capacitor under test will be adjusting what our um, frequency is for our second um, uh, triple five a stable timer and what we'll do is we'll use these decade counters to both count the pulses and display whatever um, number of pulses we get in a single train so for example to get um, uh, one digit, um, you'll count the number of pulses in one cycle of our um, of our source clock, and then that will display a particular LED. And then in the uh, in the next instance for the next digit, we'll also count the number of um, pulses in ten of our uh, of our source clock pulses to get the high digit. So that's the basics of operation of this guy. Um, a very clever circuit, I love it. And uh, yeah, so why don't we um, start building it? There we go. So this is a nice little feature. In order to fine tune the resistance values, you can parallel a, um, a small value resistor beside it to tune up or down or to tune let's see if you parallel a resistor with a smaller value um, you can tune down the the resistance value that you have so you can get better precision out of the meter but um, uh, so all of these have a second um, resistor and if you want to um, parallel these to get a lower resistance then you just need to be sure that you cut the uh, the trace um, in order to enable that is not a short. So if you want to tune um, a resistor R1 and you want to say tune it by 1%. So R equivalent is equal to R1 times R2 all over R1 plus R2. Now, the equivalent resistance of a pair of resistors in parallel is always lower than either of the resistances themselves. So say you want to get an equivalent resistance and you've got a resistor R1 and you want to get it 1% smaller than what you have. So if you make R2 equal to 100 times R1, then what you end up with is R1 squared times 100 over 101 times R1. And that's equal to R1 um, times 100 divided by 101. So you've trimmed down by 1%, one part in 100. To make a resistor larger, you put them in series. So if you've got an, a res and series is even simpler. R equivalent is equal to R1 plus R2. So if you've got an equivalent, a resistance R1 and you want to make it 1% larger, then if you make R2 100 times smaller than R1, so that's 1 one hundredth of R1 is equal to R2, then you've got R1 plus 1 one hundredth of R1, so that's equal to 1.001 times R1, or one part in a hundred. 
So you can tune resistors with low precision resistors fairly easily as long as you're operating in the range where resistors are available. And since resistors are available in a super wide variety of resistances, it's usually possible to do tuning that way. Okay, that's the resistors populated. And now let's pop in the diodes because they're of the same profile. Okay, so now we've got the capacitors all in and the um, sockets and all that's left is some pin headers and some LEDs. So I think the LEDs are probably next. The long leg is positive and the short leg, positive anode, and the short leg is cathodes. And they're all in the same orientation, plus on the left, minus on the right, anode left, cathode right. A comes before C, positive comes before negative in conventional current flow. <clears throat> Mnemonics save the day. Okay, that is going to look pretty. Totally pretty. The next thing to go in is the voltage regulator, and that is the MCL708, and that's the 2N7000 um, MOSFET, and uh, that's where they go. And then after that, pin headers, pairs of pin headers along here, and then put in some, some power here. These jumpers, I believe, are, yes, ground V-red. And so if you want to have an external power supply, you could put pin headers here, and then instead of having a battery, you would hook up your external power supply. Okay, yeah, 99, that's out of range. So it can't read up to 104 um, or um, 100 nanofarads, but 103s, that's 10 na nanofarads. And capacitors are plus or minus 15 or to 50%. They're not very accurate at all. So having that read 80, um, 8.8 .8 nanofarads. Sorry, what am I talking about? That's a 10, so it's low. It's reading 8 point something, but it's not unusually low because capacitors are plus or minus plus 
15 minus 50 or some crazy tolerances like that. So, yeah, seems to be working. Nice. Let's see, let's try something really small. Like my finger, how much capacitance is in the human body? And what? That's reading one. And that's reading twenty. It's counting up thirty three, thirty four, thirty five. 36, 35, 36, yeah, 37, somewhere around 37, sorry, 3.7 nanofarads is the capacitance of your fingers. Or is that? Oh yeah, if you press harder, you get a better connection. Nice. And that is how touch sensors work. So it is using the capacitance in your, in your body to um, you can read the capacitance in your body. And look at that. You can actually get a, um, a, uh, a feedback there to telling you how hard you pressed. So capacitive touch could be used as a force gauge too, it seems. Well, not a force gauge, but you can tell hard, how hard you're pressing. Nice. <laughs> it's fun. Oh man, once again, Bullport has a lovely kit that is instructive, beautiful, useful, and a joy to own. Thanks so much, Sar, and thank you, Jez. Like, high school project? Dude, that's awesome. Man. Anyways. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. You gonna hold these for me? Here, you hold this. You're no help at all. Emotional support only. <laughs>